So next up I'm going to show you how to make little balls on the end of the wire, which is brilliant if you're making earrings. Um, we're going to look into this a bit more next month, um, for make it month four, because next month we'll be looking at things like flux, which you really need for this to work properly. But fingers crossed it's going to work without the flux this month. Um, give it a go and see how I get on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, because I'm using the blowtorch, is I'm going to put some eye protection on. And I'm also going to go and grab a hair bobble and tie my hair back. Make sure that there's no dangly bits, nothing that's going to catch on fire. So I'm all tied up and secured. And I have my blowtorch. And I've got where the flame is going to come out um, above some water. Because there's a chance that when I go to make the ball in this little bit of wire, that it might melt. And if the, the silver melts and drops, I want it to go into the water rather than burning a hole in the table. Um, but beyond that, I'm ready to light it and get going. So I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see a bit better. Okay, so the blowtorch is on. It's directly above some water. And what I need to do is put the very end of my wire in the very tip of that blue flame. Just there. And I need to hold it at that spot until it melts. Which is easier said than done while also holding a camera. There it goes. See, I've got a little ball. So I've quenched that in the cold water. I'm just going to fish it out a minute. Could use pliers to do this. The reason I'm fishing it out is because I want the next one to be the same size. So I want to keep that secure nearby so that I can check this one against it. But other than that, it's the same again. So, very end of the wire in the very tip of the blue flame. When it starts to melt, there it goes. I'm going to drop the wire down with it. I'll explain that more in a minute. So now I'm just checking the size. This one's a little bit smaller, so I'm going to go back in. go we've got two bits of wire with nice balls on the end of them which can either just be used for decorative effect or can be used as little stoppers which is what I'm going to do because I'm going to thread some little beads onto these ear wires now I need to clean up all those oxides so all that black that's been left behind by the blowtorch and you can either do that by hand with some sandpaper or if you've got pickle or something similar to clean your metal, then you can do that. Next month we'll be talking more about things like pickle and how to clean oxides off of your silver after using a blowtorch. But for just now, I'm going to just use a little bit of sandpaper to give those a little buff and clean. Here we go, two bits of wire, little balls on the end. So now when I take my bead and thread it on, I've got a little stopper. The bead's gonna stay in place. And it's just another way of finishing it off and making those stoppers. So the same way when we're looking at the forging the end of the wire to make it splay out and become wider and flatter. This is exactly the same idea. It just looks different, um, different way of doing it. So again, have a go if you want. I'm going to make these into earrings in a minute to show you a little bit more and a few more options. Um, but one of the things just to bear in mind is you're supposed to do it with the flux. So remember that we're going to look at flux next week. Um, but because of the issue with the flux, you'll probably be able to get it to work with sterling silver. You probably will not be able to get this to work with copper or brass if you're not using flux. But if you've got some silver, have a go. This is 0.8 mil round silver wire. So one of the things I can do is just leave it as is. I've got the little ball stopper because it is very cute, nice and neat. Or you can give it a little hammer and it turns into a coin shape, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to put it on the steel block, flat bit of the hammer. And there we have a little flat coin. Now the only thing to bear in mind with this is, because um, like I said, I just cleaned it quickly with a bit of sandpaper rather than cleaning it properly with the pickle. If it still has oxides on it from the blowtorch, if it's still dirty and you hammer it, like I have done, you will be hammering that dirt into your metal, um, which would then make it harder to clean in the long run if you wanted to get rid of that. And also it can 
sort of it's working contaminants into the metal and it can make your metal a little bit brittle depending on what you're doing with it. The next thing I want to do is just work hard on these bits of metal a little bit. Um, partly because I want them to be nice and strong when I thread them in and out of my ear and partly because actually if the metal is really soft and you try and make a nice bend in it, quite often it goes a little bit wibbly wobbly. Whereas if the metal, if you've work hardened it and it's got a little bit of spring to it and you put a bend in it, the bend tends to be a lot smoother and crisper. So I've got my rawhide mallet, or you could use a rubber mallet, steel block, and I'm just hitting and turning, hitting and turning. I'm going to do the end of it as well. And I want to keep doing that until I'm able to pick it up and give it the ping test. Ding, ding. So when I'm putting pressure on it there, it's not bending out of shape too much. It's giving some resistance, so that is good. I've work hardened them. I've popped the little beads back on. And with the other pairs of earrings we've done, I've been shaping the ear wire with the pliers. But this time I want to have a bigger curve. So I'm going to use one of the doming punches from the doming, um, doming block and punch step that I showed you earlier on in the month. So I'm going to take this I'm going to hold my bead so it's just nestled under the curve of this and then I'm just going to push this nice and tight around, around the doming punch. Nice and tight. And then same on the other one. Nice and tight. So we've got two matching curves and then I'm just going to finish these ends off with the pliers. So I've got my snipe or round nose pliers, I'm going to hold them at the skinny part of the plier so that the end of the wire is just poking out and no more. Nice tight grip and I'm just going to go dink and put a little bend in it. And there we go. So same on the other one. Grab it, dink. Little bend, little earring. There's another really simple, really quick and easy, really cute way of forming some little ear wires. Take these out. And then if you can see, there's a little coin shape on the bottom holding this earring in place, little bead in place. So again, have a go. Um, let me know how you get on with them. And next up, I'm going to show you how to form some sheet metal into a ring band.